Last time out, I introduced you guys to the HBCU Hoops universe, a league where over 30 HBCUs could be for supremacy, a world filled with background stories, players, and storylines, with the main goal of making it to HBCU Madness at the end of the season and winning the championship. And as far as myself, you guys know me as Alan Ford Sr., an OG to the HBCU Hoops universe, and after spending a stint in the NBA, I was just hired by Norfolk State to become the new basketball head coach, and along with my son, we looked to turn this program around. It's opening week here in the universe, and a lot of people wonder if I can turn this Norfolk State basketball program into real contenders. Well, the process will be slow, but I'm up for the challenge. And hey, let me introduce you guys to my Norfolk State basketball team, starting with Dwayne Edwards, our point guard. Very pass first, but is not afraid to let the shot go. But if he is passing, he's most likely dumping it down to our big man, Deshaun Kendrick Cruz, an old school back to the basket type of big who can cause problems. And then my son, Allen Ford Jr., a spot up shooter with a lot of promise. I'm not just saying that because I'm his father. I really feel like his frame is meant for the next level, but we got a lot of work to do. And speaking of work, if you ask me, I don't think there's anybody in this universe that's outworking our center Shima Jackson. The junior that's been here at Norfolk State his entire career, through all the lows. When you factor him and our other wing, Aylin Maverick, our starting five looks to be very competitive. Are we world beaters? Probably not, but we're just looking to be better than last season. And if we're gonna compete, we need solid players off the bench, like Dontavious Cooker, an athletic wing who's good for one highlight play a game. And joining him off the bench is Kwame Atui, AKA Dark Matter. When he comes in off the bench, his track-like speed almost feels like a blur. And when you add Dakota Waters in with those two, the top yeah. of our bench rotation is looking pretty nice. These guys could start on other teams potentially, but for us, they're willing to sacrifice. And everybody's gonna have to sacrifice on this team if you wanna have a chance at winning, including my son. I gotta make sure I'm doing my job as a coach, make sure my guys are mentally and physically ready to compete with some of the best. Night in and night out, you never know who you can face. Like Jackson State, the defending national champs of the HBCU universe are coming for blood. They're looking to be the first back-to-back -back champions in nearly a decade. The teams like Texas Southern are fully loaded. Some may say overloaded. With a lot of talent, you may wonder how many minutes are being spread around on this team. What I can tell you is the guys that are on the court are ballers. And this team is right up there with Jackson State to the public. But not everything is public. There's a private school rivalry brewing right before our very eyes in Florida, featuring Florida Memorial and Edward Waters. FMU is the one of the newest schools in the HBCU universe and they're looking to prove a point. And with some transfer portal moves and solid recruiting, Tyshawn O'Brien and Florida Memorial are ready to prove to the universe that they're big dogs, no matter how short in stature they may be. Let FMU be an example. There's no nights off in this league. Even the private schools are public enemies. And after only being in this universe for five years, they're looking to get their names up there, the likes of Edward Waters, who has already been gaining national recognition as a future powerhouse. And while these are relatively new schools to the universe, there's no love lost between these two programs, and this rivalry will be something else for years to come. But for now, there's no bigger rivalry than Hampton versus Howard, the oldest rivalry in HBCU basketball history. And if you go to either Hampton or Howard, you refer to yourself as the real HU. Let them tell it. Whether it's cheerleaders or the band, the people, the culture, the atmosphere, it's always a competition. But in this universe, everything is settled on the basketball court. And after snagging DJ Dawn in the transfer portal, Hampton is looking to redeem themselves in his rivalry. To be honest, Howard had kind of taken control of it over the last seven years, even dating back to when I used to play for Howard. <laughs> we used to dog Hampton, I'm not gonna lie. But guys like Ghost Grimes on the roster, Hampton might be making a comeback. And if you ask Ja Calvary, playing for Hampton means everything to him. The hometown kid, originally committed to Virginia Tech, but decommitted and stayed at Hampton to be the hero. But no hero is bigger in Howard than Grant Thomas Jr. Mr. Preseason All HBCU, also known as Mr. Triple Double. Last season, he racked over a numerous amount, and this season he's looking to do the same. And with help from guys like Jay Powell, there's no doubt in my mind that my alma mater will be competing in the HBCU Madness later on in the season. But for now, they'll be competing in a highly anticipated rivalry. I'm not sure if it's as highly anticipated as this year's freshman class. Across the HBCU universe, they're ranking this class the number one in about 15 years, featuring guys like Elijah Jacobs Jr. and North Carolina A&T. And he's looking to help put the Aggies back where they belong in HBCU Madness. With guys like JJ Red and Chris Mannington already in the backcourt, Elijah Jacobs will feel the role of the wing. With those three, just know it's no off nights when he's facing the Aggies. But Jacobs was the number one recruit in this class, and he could have went anywhere in the country. The Aggies got him. And the Braves, they got Avery Wilson, the second rated freshman in the country. 
the point guard is looking to join his Alcorn State team and get them back in contention as well. Alcorn State has been a middle of the pack squad with guys like Koa Hawkins, the button sophomore. I believe they'll be right back where they belong. You ask Taylor Mitchell, the junior, he's ready for it. But they're not going to do anything without Isaiah Jackson, who's finally back after being injured for most of last season. I have to keep an eye on him. Speaking of eyes, on the other side of the state, it's Darquell Big Eyes Anderson. Yes, Darquell is the highest rated recruit in Mississippi Valley State history. How they recruited the kid from Flint all the way down to the Valley, I'll never know. What I can tell you, this might be the most quirkiest player I've ever seen. His jump shots, his free throws, everything about him is just a little off. But he's on target to be one of the top freshmen in the country this upcoming season. And I won't doubt that. Mississippi Valley State hasn't had the best success recently. But Darquell has his eyes on something bigger, a new culture. But he's not alone. Senior captain J.J. Shuttlesworth is looking to turn South Carolina State into real contenders this season. With a lot of transfers coming in, I wouldn't put it past them. Look, South Carolina State is like that one school that's always competitive no matter what. Every time you think they don't have anybody, the dogs they got will bite you. Dylan Williams, Abraham Paul, Nazir Jordan, just to name a few. A lot of these guys transferred in from other universities across the country in hopes to get their shot at a title by competing together instead of against each other. And I can't hate it. I mean, when you're trying to compete with Jackson State, Florida A&M, NC Central, you gotta have depth, unselfishness, and some guys that are really willing to put it all on the line for the squad. And these guys have no egos out here. So if you're ever thinking about coming to South Carolina State, leave it at the door. Cause out here, only the dogs survive. The Bulldogs. And with sides like Jay Moore Bryant on this team, they look to be a real dark horse. Speaking of horses, the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State, they're in a very similar situation as South Carolina State. But in my opinion, they might have the better backcourt. Malachi Houston and Kevon Smith II, two overconfident underclassmen, are ready to help lead this team to success. But despite their skill set, they're not even the most skilled players on this team. I might have to give that to DJ Brunson. One of the biggest transfers in HBCU history is when DJ left San Diego State after being a projected lottery pick a couple years back. Look, he was hoping, but then he got hurt at the end of the season. With his draft stock falling, he found himself all the way across the country here at Kentucky State. And despite getting a lot of love out there in San Diego, he has a chance here to put himself back in the draft and rebrand his stock and his image. Nobody needs a bigger rebrand than Deshaun Cooper Williams, who's had a terrible rap before landing here at Kentucky State himself. Just like DJ, he was a star recruit. But for Deshaun, this is his third college in three years. It all started when he was a five-star recruit to the University of Kentucky. And while he was having a great freshman campaign towards the end of the season, a news report came out that he was caught on camera stealing pizza from a local Papa John's near campus. But get this, this story is much more deeper than it seems. Look, about once a week, Deshaun would hit up this Papa John's near campus and get a box of pizza to take back to the dorm. But as his fame was growing on campus, one of the Papa John's workers he bumped into one night told him, yo, bro, you don't got to pay for this box of pizza. You good. It's on me. And Deshaun, being an 18-year-old kid, offered to pay it the first time. But after a few no's from the worker, he left with the pizza and said, appreciate it, bro. And unfortunately, as Kentucky was getting ready for March Madness, the same worker went to the police and told them that Deshaun stole boxes of pizza from their establishment. And with the camera footage, it looked like Deshaun clearly just walked out of the restaurant. He was charged with a misdemeanor theft. Without getting a real chance to explain his story, he was kicked off the team and off campus. And after spending the year at JUCO, he finds himself here at Kentucky State for his junior season. But he made a promise to himself, his family, and his teammates that despite what they heard about him previously, he's fully locked in and invested to the guys in green and yellow and really ready to rise from the bottom to the top. But some teams are stuck at the bottom. In Langston University and Arkansas Pine Bluff, brighter days have been passed and now they're on the verge of replacement. Look, if you didn't know, if you have 10 consecutive losing seasons in the HBCU Hoops universe, the university is put up for replacement by a vote. And while they're looking to avoid that, they're putting a lot of pressure on the back of Elijah Knight, the two-star recruit out of Miami a season ago. Now a sophomore has a lot of weight to carry. And for this small team out of Oklahoma, he's got to put the team on his back and get this team somehow to over 16 wins. And if not, he might have to transfer universities after the season. While Elijah Knight has a lot of work to do in Langston, the same could be said for Caltavius Vianette in Arkansas, Pine Bluff. The Golden Lions are relying on their golden child. Caltavius is one of the highest rated recruits in Pine Bluff history. But now entering his junior year, even he hasn't been able to turn things around for them. 
what his emergence as a player and as a leader, they're hoping that this may be the season, they can avoid 10, because if not, he's going too. And despite having one of the best courts in HBCU universe, the bluff isn't rocking like he used to. And while these two teams are fighting to maintain their HBCU eligibility, you can't share the HBCU experience without the Bayou Classic, Grambling and Southern. And due to a shooting on campus a couple of years back, they decided to cancel the event for two seasons, but it's finally back and better than ever. Between the football classic and the basketball classic, you fans got a lot to cheer for. This is arguably the biggest matchup in the South. Look, both of these teams, they got some real competitors, some real athletes, animals. The point guard position for Southern, that's being held down by LaMarcus Treason. The young kid with a lot of tattoos, yes, don't get it confused. He's a real finesse player on the court, and he's looking to help lead guys like Judith Jones, who are coming back from suspension. After getting caught up with the FASPA scam, he's come back and ready to hoop. But if he thought he could just walk on his team and be a big dog, he's sadly mistaken. He got a lot of talent and a lot of guys ready to compete and put Southern back on the map. The only hope is that they don't beat each other up in practice. But on the other side of this rivalry, Isaiah Hall is looking to become Gremlins all-time leading scorer after the season. He's currently third and is only 500 points away from moving up. He's also only the current active player that played in the last rivalry against Southern three years ago. But for him, this season is big time. In addition to being the all-time scoring leader, if he can somehow get Gremlin back to the promised land, it's no doubt in my mind that they'll build him a statue outside of campus. But he's not going to be alone on this team. If they want any chances, some of these underclassmen are going to have to step up. Guys like Jalen Edwards and Malik Myers are ready to take huge leaps this season on the wing spot. And joining Isaiah Hall in the backcourt is freshman Marcus Richard. And in the paint, it's Adonis Kane, senior. Between these five, the Southern's five, the Bayou Classic is in good hands. So is the state of Georgia. The On My Mind Classic, featuring Morehouse and Clark Atlanta, seems to only be getting better with time. And this year, it might be at its peak. The two universities have done an outstanding job at recruiting talent all throughout the state of Georgia, including Seth Wesley from Augusta. Despite being the top 25 player at one point, he tore his MCL in the Georgia State High School Final a couple of years back. Clark Atlanta waited for him to get healthy, and now he's looking even better than before. In the backcourt for the Panthers is Tyrese Miller, the junior, a former three-star recruit out of Northside High School in Columbus, Georgia. Was all city at one point. And for him, Seth Wesley and the rest of these Panthers, they're looking to be some real dogs. They put Atlanta and Georgia back on the map nationwide, prove that Georgia is their house. But Morehouse got something to say about that. For Sakeem Bird, he's in his redshirt sophomore season. Bird tore his ACL at the end of his freshman season and spent last year rehabbing. And now he's back. The kid from Fulton County is ready to put his city back on the map, Atlanta. Look, we know Morehouse is an all-men's school, don't get it confused, nothing sweet over there. So this year's Georgia On My Mind Classic looks to be a fun one, and both of these programs are heading in the right direction. But I wish I could say the same for Delaware State. They announced recently that they dismissed Zach Bryson from the basketball program. And if you don't know who Zach Bryson is, he had one of the most explosive freshman seasons in HBCU basketball history. He led Delaware State in scoring, rebounding, assisting, stealing, blocks, field goal percentage, I mean, he was on pace to be Delaware State's greatest player of all time and put his name up in the lore of HBCU Universe. This kid from Chicago seemed to have a big chip on his shoulder. Nobody really understood why. He didn't really say a whole lot. He just kind of stayed to himself and got busy on the court. And while Delaware State didn't have a great season last year, they were heavily relying on the return of Bryson to help this team compete this year. But Zach seems like he had other plans. After school let out in April, he decided to enter his name in the draft combine with no agent. He wanted to compete against the nation's best and see if he can get the scouts attention. But sadly, he didn't have the greatest combine and the scouts told him maybe he should stay at school just one more year and perfect his craft. Unfortunately, he hasn't been back to campus since and the HBC Universe might have just lost one of their best talents in recent memory. And while the Universe waits to find out what's wrong with Zach, Delaware State is forced to put the ball in the hands of their sophomore, Dre Parker, who was also part of that recruiting class with Zach, but didn't get nearly as much shine last season. This time around, got no choice. He's thrust into the role of being the guy. And with the season approaching, he has to put all the nervousness aside and get ready to hoop. Because whether he's ready or not, the season is here. It's opening night for my Norfolk State Spartans. And we're on the road in Atlanta, visiting Clark. And listen, as a player, I've been to a lot of campuses, been through this and done that. But as a coach suiting up for the first time, it's a different feeling when you're visiting the city and walking into an arena. You're really soaking in the whole atmosphere. It's kind of hard to zone out. But for my players, I can only hope that they're ready for the challenge. As I already mentioned, Clark and Anna got some real dogs on the team. For my guys, they're used to losing. This is where we got to turn it around from open and tip. 
So I put the ball in the hands of my guy, Dwayne Edwards, our point guard, and told him run the offense that we practice in practice, which was mostly getting down to the paint and getting inside out opportunities. And early on, it was looking like we were going to do just that for the entire game. Jima Jackson started us off with good ball movement from the bigs, but unfortunately, our defense lacked, and Clark Atlanta made us pay for it. And for my son, he was having a rough debut, missing wide open shots and getting into zero rhythm. And whether it was taking advantage of mismatches or getting into our heads, Clark Atlanta was on full force tonight. And we were discombobulated on offense and defense, getting illegal screens, playing the referees. It's the part of coaching that nobody looks forward to, having to rear you guys in when everything seems to be falling apart. And when it seemed like things were going bad, <laughs> it got worse. Tyrese Miller would spark a serious run in the second half and pull a Clark up by 15 points. And at that point, I was just excited to see my son hit his first basket. Outside of that, we were getting destroyed. Seth Wesley, Tyrese, Rich Daniels, and this Clark Atlanta basketball team was flying out there. As a coach, and every time out, I just implored my guys to keep shooting and keep fighting the fight. You don't want to go out as losers. That's how we did in the past when I wasn't here. With about six minutes to go, after this emphatic putback by their big man Samuel Saint, it seemed like all hope was lost. I got to give my guys credit. They fought and they kept fighting. But it seemed like Clark had answered for everything we asked. Every time we tried to attack the paint, whether it was guards or big men, everybody was flying to the basketball, either getting a block or a steal. And in transition, nobody was guarding Seth Wesley. And for my coaching debut, I had to watch my guys get torched. And there was nothing I could do about it but accept defeat. And I got to tip my cap to Seth Wesley. He dropped 25, two steals, and a number of highlights in his debut. Meanwhile, for me, I can only sit there and wallow. And when my assistant coach, Ed Johnson, my OG, kept imploring the guys to fight to the double zeros, I just sat there wondering where I went wrong in practice. And for my son, he had a very less than desirable debut, but I was encouraged. It seemed like the guys on the team were in good spirits. And that means we're in the right direction. Look, the hardest thing about turning around a losing team is the losing atmosphere and the losing spirit that a team takes on. So if my guys were still fully invested after this open tonight loss, and so should I. I'm fully locked in. Despite our loss by 15 tonight, I saw some areas where we can improve in practice, some areas we need to clean up. And that's my job now. Not a player, but a coach. While we were playing Clark Atlanta, just down the street, Morehouse was playing host to Alcorn State, where they got a victory led by sophomore Jabari McKee. And thanks to his 28 point effort, Georgia is off to a great start for both their programs, getting victories on opening night. Speaking of two programs on the rise, in a rare occurrence, two teams renewed their rivalry on opening night. And that was Tennessee State versus Kentucky State. And they saw the debut of guys like Deshaun Cooper Williams and DJ Brunson. And for Tennessee State, the return of Kiji Yamahawa, the sensation out of Japan, was exciting. This matchup between him and Deshaun will feed families tonight. And between him and Chidi Adebayo, the big man, Tennessee State was becoming a hub for foreign recruits. And that's exciting for the universe. Trust and believe, we'll be interested to see how this turns out for their team in years to come. And for this rivalry, it's a big deal. You got the foreign recruit-led team in Tennessee State, and the other half of this rivalry is a team in Kentucky State that's full of transfers and guys that are looking to rebrand their image. And for Deshaun, he feel right back at home. And those knowing his story, love to see it. But the leader of this game was none other than Kavon Smith II. The sophomore guard for Kentucky State put up a 19 point and nine assist performance, leading Kentucky State to the victory. And don't get it confused, this Tennessee State team is gonna be a tough out for anybody. And for this rivalry, I'm fully expecting it to rise to the top in a matter of a couple years. The game pretty much out of reach. Kevon Smith the second put the game away with an emphatic dunk and the crowd erupted. And with this atmosphere being this electric, I'm not sure who wants to go on the road to Kentucky State. Just ask TSU. And just a couple of nights later, my Norfolk State Spartans played our second game of the season. And we were on the road again, this time playing Alabama A&M. And while this game was a lot closer than the Clark Atlanta game, a and put the ball in the hands of Will Rell and Noah Alexander Jr. And they closed us out from the field on the free throw line, having dominant performances. As for my guys, and particularly my son, he got outplayed. And humbly speaking, I feel like I got outcoached. And as I walked off the court, I had to try to think of what speech I would give the guys back in the locker room. I didn't even know myself. You got to know how to coach the close losses just as much as the blowouts. And this program hired me to turn his basketball team around. And starting off 0-2 wasn't exactly in the cards. I'm going to have to figure this out one way or another. My job depends on it.